Good morning. I don't hear. Good morning. <laughs> I'm Daniel, founder and executive director of Joy Research and Service Center for the Disabled. And the Joy Center is serving the underprivileged people of the world. I personally give my praise and thanks to the AMA, AMA Leadership, for their excellency of a selection of plenary session speaker this morning by giving a chance to the underprivileged missionary. Because missionaries who are working for the marginalized people are also marginalized in the missionary societies. Disability missions is to remove barriers which exclude disabled persons from all aspects of a society. This morning, AMA leadership removed one of the barriers which used to exclude marginalized missionaries from speaking in prominent mission conference like this. Thank you. By the way, Joy Center for the Disabled has begun its missionary work from the moment of birth of very special child, Joy, who is my daughter, born with Down syndrome, which is kind of intellectual disability, now age of 18. Our organization, Joy Center's name, was named after my daughter's name. Through Joy's birth, Joy Center is, is now running multiple programs serving people with disabilities around the world, such as in Mexico, China, Philippines, Vietnam, and Uganda. The topics I've been asked to speak about this morning is missions in broken world. Yes, it is true that we as missionaries are doing missions in a broken world. Not just mildly broken, but a profoundly and utterly broken world. Everywhere you look, there are signs the world is fractured. Human beings are deeply hurting. Some people are in much pain, feel so hopeless, they take their own lives. It has been recently established that per population, Korea has the highest suicide rate in the world. This is also a country with the highest concentration of mega churches and the church attending Christians. How can one reconcile these two statistics? However, generally speaking, evangelical churches and church leaders worldwide seem to pay little attention to other very serious issues, such as injustice, inequality, discrimination, poverty, racism, sex trafficking, child labor, work, etc., which is much having to do with the brokenness of the world. Our bodies, minds, families, relationships, systems, government, ecosystems, all suffer from deep brokenness. Yes, everything is broken. Every facet of this world is fractured. No single good things remain intact. God's heart is also broken at this state of affairs in his creation. Well, people seem to like to break things. They even say all the records are broken. Murder, terror, lies, scandals, corruption, exploitation, pollution, greed. There is a long list of problems this world faces today. It is only getting longer and worse. I may even say as missionaries working for the person with a disability that the world is disabled. Viewed through this lens, the world becomes disabled because people are disabled. 
not in terms of physical disability, but of social spiritual disability. As we know, when Adam and Eve brought sin into the world, curls fell upon the earth. Thus, part of the ministry and the responsibility of Christian is to join God in the work of restoration of all the brokenness in the world. According to UNICEF, 16,000 children die every day, and birth of nearly 230 million children the age of five worldwide has not been officially recorded. 2.4 billion people lack access to improved sanitation, and out of estimated 35 million people living with HIV. Globally, about one-third of women aged 20 to 24 were child brides. Every 10 minutes, somewhere in the world, an adolescent girl dies as a result of violence. Nearly half of all deaths in children under the age of five are due to malnutrition. This translates into the unnecessary loss of about three million young lives a year. Let me take another statistic from WHO, World Health Organization, for the case of a person with a disability. And you see, it is not very clear, that C. And you see very dramatic difference of disability prevalence among countries, for example, New Zealand and uh, Australia got the 24% and 18.5% respectively. And North Korea around here and South Korea, 8.2 and South Korea, 5.4. It is very interesting statistic. And the Malaysia and down there, just 1.3% of the populations are disabled. Why this big difference? Uh -huh. People of New Zealand and uh, Australia must have sinned much, much more than people of Malaysia. In fact, number of persons with a disability, each country are grounded on their adoption of definition of disability. So, uh, since government of Malaysia defines disability only on the ground of severe physical disabilities. And other statistics from UN suggest some significant implications. One, fewer marriages, more divorces. The country with the highest ratio of divorces is Belgium, with whopping 71% of marriage to divorce ratio. And very similar statistics according to the countries below. And second significance is rise in birth outside marriage. 40% in 2014 in USA, 80% among African Americans in USA, childbirth outside marriage. Highest rate of non-marital childbearing occur in Latin America, and only other countries to share these high rates are South Africa and Sweden. And very significant observation that I made. And let me take some statistics from Uganda, Africa where I am currently ministering to the people of Uganda with disabilities. Demographic profile of Uganda population, 29.6 million people live, and 57% of the Uganda's population are children below age of 18, and estimated 5 million children in Uganda live below poverty line. Approximately 105,000 children aged 0 to 14 years 
having HIV positive. Current status and uh, status on orphans and other vulnerable children in Uganda, 3.3 million orphans in Uganda, one out of every four households in Uganda has at least one orphan, almost one out of every two orphans are a result of AIDS. And orphans and other vulnerable children in Uganda are estimated to be 7.5 million, uh, equivalent to 46% of all children in Uganda. In countries like Uganda, disabled child is seen as a curse, bringing shame on the family. Mothers are often told to abandon, even kill their infant child. Children with cerebral palsy are frequently left lying on the floor. They can live lonely and miserable, isolated lives suffering from malnutrition, respiratory problems, and pressure sores. Hundreds of Uganda children are reportedly being sacrificed every year by witch doctors who have convinced country's superstitious elite that mutilating them will make them even richer. Wealthy businessmen are paying traditional healers thousands of dollars to hunt down impoverish the children and harvest their body parts, which they believe can cure impotence and boost their fertility. These witch doctors cut limbs and remove children's genitals after kidnapping them on their way home from school and as, go, as they go to fetch water for their family. Their dismembered remains are later discovered in forest and the building sites. In Uganda, many people living with the neurological disabilities and other similar conditions are seen as having misfortune in their lives. It is believed people with such disabilities are useless and burdened to the community with no hope for a better, uh, better future. Many children from northern Uganda suffering from hydrocephalus are given names associated with evil spirits as referred as evil spirits. The naming of these children is typically done by the paternal grandmother. Some parents have been forced to kill these children and have abandoned them, allow, allowing them to die from neglect. They are stigmatized and blamed for causing such disabilities in their children, forced to consult evil spirit for the healing of their children. For missions to the broken, we may say that we are engaging in special missions. Special missions may include efforts such as special needs ministry, disability ministry, homeless ministry, hospice ministry, hotline for teenage pregnancy, suicide prevention lifeline, HIV helpline, rescue missions for women, abandoned children ministry, refugee missions, rehabilitation missions for the drug and alcohol addicts, etc. These are just some common conventional classification that refer to special mission. Then some questions arise. Number one, what is special? Who is special? Are certain target groups special, such as children with a disability? There are myths about children with disabilities, such as they are angels, they have a sixth sense, they have born with supernatural powers, etc. Are children angels? My answer is yes and no. Yes, because they all, all every human being is created in the image of God and given to us as a special gift. No, because they are not angels by nature, they are the same as we are. They are 
as silly as we are, they are sinful as much as we are. And the next question arises, are workers serving certain groups special? Are special education teachers special? Are volunteers special? People assume that they look, they took jobs serving people with disabilities because they are special. I too um, am often told that I'm very special due to the work that I do. Well, from my around 30 years in uh, disability ministry, I observe we are no different from anyone else, just as well intentioned, just as sinful and corruptible. Of course, there are exceptional teachers and leaders for people with the disabilities. Nevertheless, they are not special in a sense that they are specially chosen. And do this ministry require special knowledge or skills? Not necessarily. It requires proper training and education with all other areas would also demand. However, bottom line is only special love is required. In summary, everybody is special. Nobody is exception. The no child left behind policy for education in America under the Bush administration reflects equality and non-discrimination against disability. Some missionaries express uneasiness, unhappiness, or feel insignificant for their engagement in NGO work because they assume their work are indirect form of missions. Is this definition biblical? I do not believe this is biblical. Jesus never made a distinction between direct and indirect missions. When Jesus spent his most of time in Galilee ministering to the people in forms of healing, casting out demons, feeding the crowds, he never regarded those actions as prerequisites for the more important work of preaching. Acts of compassion and preaching of the gospel cannot be separated from each other. The Bible strongly suggests, supports, and imperative for healing the broken world. The Spirit of the Lord upon us because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoner, recovery of the sight of the blind, the liberate the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is Jesus' inaugural statement of his ministry. To heal a broken world is one of Jesus' core missional imperatives. He came to repair, restore, revive, rebuild, heal, and renew. He did not come simply to save souls. Examining from Isaiah chapter 60 and Luke 4, 18, 19, different ministries are not independent or segregated efforts, but part of the larger work of God is doing. The passage is pointed out that healing, but not healing ministry, for Jesus Christ has done. Care for homeless, but not homeless ministry. Welfare for the disabled, but not disability ministry itself. Rather, it is by nature kingdom ministry. And please pay attention to uh, this beautiful poetic structure of the passage. The passage has three different distinct sections. The first part, A, describes Jesus' action before reading the scripture from Isaiah. And the corresponding third, third part describes 
Jesus' action after he finished the reading. And then the central part is quotation from Isaiah. The phrases of good news to the poor and year of the Lord's favor are parallel, which creates focus on three central lines in bold. The focus of the passage is indeed essence of Jesus' messianic role that is released from the physical, social, spiritual bondage. It is interesting that Jesus' focus it Jubilee mission is summarized under the heading of good news to the poor. Therefore, it is probable that term, the poor, was used as a sort of collective term for all the disadvantaged, particularly captives, maimed, blind, the lepers, as David Bosch asserted. A key word in Jesus' Jubilee proclamation is poor. It seems that Luke intended to write his verses in Luke 4, 16 to 20 in chiastic structure, theologically speaking, and beautiful poetic structure. I'd like to add one more comment from Lenski who is Old Testament commentator, observes that in the Septuagint text of Isaiah 61, 1 to 2, there are no articles for poor captives and blind people. Thus he asserts, poor is general term for the entire Gentile persons. Thus it can be said, goodness to the poor is the gracious word of inclusion to the marginalized people. This is the motive that calls for inclusiveness. It is now proclaimed Gentiles are recipient of God's deliverance too. There are broken people group introduced in the passage, such as the poor, prisoners, the blind, and the oppressed. Nevertheless, mission that Jesus was commissioned was not healing ministry itself. Rather, it was kingdom that was eschatologically realized through those disadvantaged people groups. They were not merely targets of called compassion ministry. Rather, they became main cast for divine banquet in the kingdom of God. And I'd like to introduce deaf missions in China Deaf in China, one of the largest unreached people group in the world, very recently, the International Mission Society identified the deaf community in the people group list. In fact, no well-known international mission organization's agency has previously approached strategically about reaching this group because they have not regarded them as a separate people group. They just have been considered handicapped, disabled. The following stories highlight extraordinary and groundbreaking way of engaging in missions. They illustrate how missions can be accomplished in a way that traditional mode of mission cannot. As I explained, there are 30 million deaf in China, according to China government official survey. The numbers of Christians among deaf in China less than 1%. Our mission organizations show missions have doing mission for the deaf in China about 20 more years. We have established a couple of Bible schools and training centers for them. We have also planted more than 50 deaf churches in China. These numbers are extremely small in comparison to total population of deaf in China. However, we help them to discover their unique contribution in a way uh, unimaginable to people with a conventional, limited view of this population. People regarded deaf as disabled. 
unable to hear or speak, as severely limited in communication skills. In fact, the deaf have a robust method of communication which is expressive, complex as any other language, sign language. And we have been uh, training teams to go out on deaf evangelism tours by train, in addition to planting deaf churches plant in a city, towns near our deaf Bible training center. Due to the huge geographical scale in this part of China, it takes about 10 hours by train to go to these designated towns. Actually, this is improvement from 10 to 15 hours it used to take before a recent high-speed train development. Our deaf, seminar, uh, our deaf seminary organized outreach team for the purpose of deaf church planting city to city. Our team loves to take a train for missions because of its effectiveness. As soon as team members are aboard, they tour train compartment by compartment to scan if there are any deaf passengers on board. They are easy to recognize because they use sign language. As I already mentioned, that there are 30 million deaf persons in China. It means they are everywhere. You can meet them wherever you go. When our mission team finds someone who is deaf, they approach the person and begin to talk using sign language. No different than anyone else who would start a conversation with someone in any other language. Pretty soon, the team members of us begin to present the gospel, and often with great enthusiasm, they share about Jesus Christ with even their faces and clothes covered in sweat. Their witnesses only stops when the train stops at the next station or destination. This can be up to 10 hours of talking. Other passengers on board marvel at their non-stop enthusiastic uh, signing conversation. Even policemen have watched over their conversation without clue that they are talking about Jesus Christ because they do not understand sign language. <laughs> Where public evangelism is still strictly banned, deaf, our deaf, are freely talking about Jesus Christ. Deaf community, which has been marginalized as disabled, is now freely speaking about Jesus, whereas as we assumed normal and person, people of speech, have to shut our mouth in public, which ironically result in disabling of our speech. This is secret of disability missions. And one more illustration from our ministry that I'd like to introduce. Uh, can I? One deaf church which I love to visit is in S city in China. This church has no building. They worship just in the aisle by the marketplace. Loud noise from the shop all around the shouting to attract the customers. The rush of cars passing by on the street. People bustling through the meeting place. Music blaring from the store across from us. All of distracted me from concentrating, worshiping together. Despite this, our deaf friends had no problems staying very devoted to the worship because they do not hear. We who can hear see them as deceived because they cannot hear. However, they confessed that we are so blessed because we do not hear meaningless, dirty words of the world 
We are only sensitive to what the Holy Spirit speaks. And what a powerful sentiment. This is a kind of disability missions that breaks the stereotype of perception toward the people with a disability and propose new horizon of missions. There are so many amazing stories about our special missions, and I would like to add just one example of missions, uh, disability missions in Uganda. And we attempted strategic, to appro a strategic approach to Islamic missions through our special education teachers, training programs which run in co-partnership with the Uganda Christian University. Our pilot test resulted in a very surprising outcome in short term. There is serious shortage of special education teachers in Islamic countries because they regarded special education teachers as second level of teacher handling with the problematic children, so reluctant to be a special education teacher. So we have been asked to send the special education teachers to those Islam Islamic countries in Africa. Now through partnership with the special education professionals and institutions, we are equipping those candidates with the mission mind. Those special education teachers may be great instrument for mission to Muslim countries in the future. Now, we must ask how to restore God's image in a broken world. Conclusively speaking, that's only possible through forgiveness. And uh, now we, you may know and heard about the Sandy Hook's story, which was, happened, the mass massacre happened on December 14, 2012. And Scarlett Lewis, who lost her son on that day, made the people of the world shocked by announcing that she forgave her son's killer just a few days after son's death by shooting. Let's just hear what she say. Not speaker is sorry, not able to. Uh, audio is son. Disabled. <laughs> huh? What? Sorry, very sorry. This really touching confession from the mother who lost her son. Sorry. Anyway, I will introduce her final remarks. I wish you can uh, hear her testimony from YouTube inserts. And she concludes, so the cross is the place of hope and new life, however broken and torn our lives. And our world may be, we never lose heart, but we look to the cross for there, in Christ, God was rec reconciling the world to himself. Why are as we as missionaries doing missions? We are made to enjoy, not to compete, to glorify God, not to be glorified. In conclusion, Paradoxically, disadvantaged people groups can be contributing to heal the broken world. As Henry Nguyen suggested, only wounded healer is able to heal the broken world. Thank you.